Hey there, what's up? Uh, my name is Steve. Today we're going to go through AWS DevOps professional exam. So I've recently passed this, so I'd like to take a few moments to recall my thoughts and how I prepared for this exam um, to share with everybody online. So first off, let's take a look at the chart of AWS certification. The very foundational one is the AWS Certified Cloud pr Practitioner. This is the most foundational of the most basic entry level. It gives you a very good idea of what AWS or what the cloud really looks like, how you can operate. And then there are three associate level, which is architect, solutions architect, then sysops, admin or developer. These three are all associate level. And then there are two professional level. One is called solutions architect professional. The other is DevOps engineer professional. I passed all of these and I've made at least one video to talk about how I prepared and passed for each one of these certification exams. Now in this video, I'd like to talk about how I was able to pass DevOps engineer professional and how I was able to prepare for that. If you'd like to take a look at the other videos, I'll put the link down below in this video's description. Feel free to check them out if you find them helpful. Another quick note is that as soon as you get certified for the professional level, all of the associate level and the foundational level will be auto renewed if you have these certificates that happened to me. So when I passed this one, so I passed this solutions architect associate level first, like six months ago before I passed the professional level. So each of these certificate has a three year validation period. That means after I passed this one, this one has been valid, has been passed six months already. And when I passed this one, this one got out of renewed for six more months. So that's just to give you guys a, some more context about how these, how these certifications ranked. And so does this one. When I passed this one, I got a two more emails about saying these two certificates of mine are out of renewed for five or six more months whenever the time for this one is expiring. So let me show you guys my certificates. They have completely migrated all of the badges to a new website they called youracclaim.com. So after logging in, these, these are all of the certificates I've, that I have learned over the past a few months. Today, I'd like to talk about this one, DevOps Engineer Professional. Um, this one, I passed it a couple weeks ago. I didn't spend a lot of time to study for this. The reason being because I have just recently passed it, Solutions Architect Professional exam. This one is really, really difficult. I actually just made a video a couple weeks ago about how I passed it, this one. I spent too much time studying for this, so I aced I couldn't see that I aced through this because I didn't even get to 900 out of 10,000 out of 1,000 marks. I got 800 something, but I learned quite a lot through, through studying for this one. So that's my path. If you would like to pass Solutions Architect Professional first, and then you go passing DevOps engineer professional, the path will be a lot easier. That's actually my path. You, if you are not aiming at a get solutions architect professional at this stage, you just want to study for DevOps engineer professional. I guess the way the exam is structured is that DevOps engineer is a little bit simpler, not at a lower magnitude, but it's just a, a little bit simpler because it's more focusing on the DevOps, more on the operational side. So let's go through a few of the key AWS services that I think you'll absolutely master it, at least to the surface. You want to at least go through the FAQ of all of these very important services to enable you as a DevOps or as a SysOps engineer to get your day-to-day -day job to be done. All right, first um, is AWS Code Commit. This is a, AWS Code Commit is a fully managed source control service. It's very similar to GitHub or Bitbucket or whatever that is that has an open source version out, out there. But here it's an AWS version which enables you to track your code, collaborate with your coworkers very closely and very interactively. This is the AWS version. You want to understand how you can use this, how you can set this up. Code commit, that's the first one. Second one is code star. This is the one that can give you a very interactive dashboard. It can make you very easy to collaborate with your team very securely and very easily. Again, it's very AWS special, so go ahead and study this. 
third one is code build. Code build is something very similar to Jenkins. You want to use this one to integrate, to build a CI CD fully automated pipeline. This is something that you definitely want to need. Of course, you can still use Jenkins to integrate with AWS, but if the exam is asking you what is the AWS version, of course, it's not going to ask you like this, but it's going to ask you something similar. Which one do you want to use or what are the what could be the sources of the events of the actions for code build? What are the possible things? What are the possible sources or actions? You want to know you you want to know which one of the four or five given choices are correct, right? Then code deploy. This is something that's also very cool. You want how can you deploy code? Of course, Amazon has very sophisticated or complicated or very mature ways to deploy your code because as a DevOps engineer to deploy your code is very is basically an art. How do there are multiple ways like blue green deployment, immutable deployment or canary deployment, all sorts of deployment. The question could basically describe you a scenario and you'd like to understand based on this scenario, based on these constraints, which deployment strategy or which code deploy method I can apply to this that could give you the correct answer to that specific question. So you want to understand code deploy as well. Code pipeline. This is also a very key component of how an AWS DevOps engineer could get its day to day job to be done. The very ideal environment for any software development in my mind should be automated, should be as much automated as possible. If there is any duplication, then this duplication should be automated because if you involve human interaction, that's going to introduce error. It's going to be error prone. So let's set up anything to be automated as much automated as possible. So code pipeline will give you that possibility, will give you that option to have your code from the moment it's checked into AWS Git repo, and then it can build. It can be built and then it can run unit test, integration test, sanity test, whatever, and then it can be safely deployed. So you want to study this. And also I would say all of these, these first five AWS services that I've just mentioned, code deploy, code star, code pipeline, all of these, they are kind of very closely integrated. So maybe you just want to set up, you log into your AWS console and set up a code pipeline, set up a um, code commit repo to play around with this. Say you, after you push a simple or dummy code change into your code commit repo, What's going to happen after that? If you have set up this completely automated pipeline, right? Then that will give you a very deep impression. All right, this is for AWS code pipeline. OpsWorks, this is a very sophisticated or very confusing AWS service because I have no idea about what Chef and Puppet is. So I really spent quite a lot of time when I was preparing for AWS Solutions Professional, Solutions Architect Professional. So I got a good idea about OpsWorks. So when I was preparing for DevOps Professional, I basically scanned through this. There are three versions of this, AWS OpsWorks for Chef Automate, OpsWorks for Puppet Enterprise, and then OpsWorks Stacks. So which one of these three is the correct choice for the given for the described scenario in the exam is something that you want to understand because you want to understand which one is fitting for which use case, right? And what are the reasons, what are the backgrounds for AWS to come up with these three different solutions that all fall under AWS OpsWorks, this service. You want to understand this. All right, this is OpsWorks. And then code deploy introduces blue green deployments. This is just one of the deployment strategy that I just mentioned. And how can you implement this very commonly seen deployment strategy, blue green? And what are the benefits? What are the pros and cons compared with other deployment strategies? And how you can achieve this deployment strategy by using AWS services, for example, AWS code deploy or even Route 53, or a combination of different AWS services. How can you do that? You want to understand this. And then here, this one is AWS config. I guarantee you that you are going to get as, at least three or four questions that talks, that aims at examining your knowledge, your skills about AWS config, because this is a very powerful 
service. For example, if anything has been changed or any incident has been has happened, AWS Config could come in very handy to detect what had happened. Or it can just constantly monitor your services, your infra your infrastructure, your configuration. So this is a very powerful service. I highly recommend you do spend some time to understand the release FAQ to go through simple samples that will help you understand AWS Config a lot. Because as a DevOps engineer, you definitely will play around, will, will need this AWS Config. It will definitely help you a lot in your day-to-day -day work. And then AWS CloudFormation. This one couldn't be emphasized too much because CloudFormation is basically, they call it infrastructure as code. And how can you automate, standardize all of your configurations, all of your deployment, so that when you replicate from one region to another, you can make sure that you can rest assured that the region in US East 1 and in the region in US East 2 or the region in EU1 or the region in AP Northeast 2, they are exactly the same. How can you make sure, rest assured, that is the case? Cloud formation is the way to go. I, I think you'll get at least five, if not 10 questions about cloud formation in DevOps Engineer. So definitely spend a lot of time. And I would say if you passed the other exams, Cloud formation is something that you cannot miss. You cannot have missed cloud formation and passed one exam. That's not possible. <laughs> cloud formation is as important as DynamoDB to Solutions Architect. All right, next one. Um, it will test some of your knowledge about migration because migration is a, is an ongoing topic. Because like I say prior to Cloud Wars born, everybody has their data center inside the house, in-house, right? So after Cloud was born, there's naturally a migration phase because everybody needs to migrate from their in-house infrastructure to the cloud. So you want to understand AWS SMS server migration service, in which case you want to use this, what benefits can it bring? You want to understand this. Round 53, your knowledge will be tested on your understanding and which use case and how Route 53, say name, alias, a record, all of these things, how they can be plugged into your use case, into this specific question in the exam. You want to understand that. And last, a Beanstalk. And this one will be tested in DevOps Engineer exam as well. What are the benefits that it can um, this Elastic Beanstalk can bring to the table? And in which use cases you should be using, you should be turning to Elastic Beanstalk instead of something else. Study this. And then ECS, Elastic Container Service. I think at least a couple questions will be given in the DevOps Engineer exam to, um, to test your understanding about Amazon ECS. So go through its FAQ or set up an ECS container, play around with this. And the last one that I'd like to mention is AWS Data Pipeline. Because as a DevOps engineer, you are, it's very possible that in your day-to-day -day work, you need to set up some sort of pipeline, right? Not only the code pipeline, but also data pipeline. You get data from, like say, um, from a daily snapshot, you, you do some processing using, using EMR or whatever, and then you push, you pump the processed data into somewhere. How you can do that, AWS data pipeline is the way to go. So try to set up a data pipeline, sample by yourself in your AWS account, that will give you a very good understanding so all of these are different AWS services topics that you want to understand and study. And how you study that, for me, what I used again is Wiz Labs. So this is the this is the a very cool website. If you have watched my other AWS certification exam videos, I'm sure that you cannot miss this one, AWS Wiz Labs. Let me quickly log in. All right, this is the Wiz Labs um, preparation site that I have used to help me pass AWS certified DevOps engineer professional. You see it has practice tests, online courses, labs, report my certificate, all of these. So what I used is that you can see, I tested, I used uh, its free test uh, attempts. I finished one report, I got only 60%, so I failed that, fail, Ex result is fail. And then I took two of these. They have five practice tests after you purchase this, but I completed only two because I ran out of time and I found that maybe I have a chance to pass it. So I just went on and took the exam. So this one, I got only 45% fail, but that's fine. Um, this one I fail also, I got 67%, it's slightly better. And they have one section test called CD and process automation. I completed this one as well. 
So how I was able to use this to help me prepare for this exam? Again, I've introduced, I've told people in my other AWS videos as well, but I'll just quickly mention here again, how I was able to use this is, I just start the exam. So start the exam. Let me just quickly start the exam again one more time. Start quiz, start. So here you see, uh, they've given you 80 questions. And a few nice features that I really like is that you can pause. There's a timer here and there's a pause button. You can pause the quiz because once you start using this, it's really difficult. I don't think anybody could go through this 80 questions in one session because in the real exam, it's 180 minutes, three hours total. When I was preparing, sitting down to take the practice tests, it's very difficult for me to find just one block of time of three hours to go through this entire exam. So I really appreciate this pause button. That helps me out tremendously because next time when I log back in, this session is saved. That's that's one thing that I really like. So now let me go back. Yeah, another thing that I really like is once you have completed the practice exam, what you can do is that it's going to give you a report. Say if I click this report, it will show me which questions that I got correct, which ones are I got incorrect. And it's going to give you a very detailed explanation of why this is the case, why this answer is correct, and why the other answer is wrong. So this is something that I really appreciate. It's going to be a big time saver, and it's even pointing you to the correct AWS official documentation. So. I find this is the best way for me to understand one AWS service. For example, this one is AWS Beanstalk. It's a big time saver. I think it, this is a, one of the best investments that I have ever found to help me pass and prepare for AWS certification exams. So I highly recommend you guys to take to take a peek at, at this. This is how I was able to pass uh, AWS DevOps professional exam. Yeah, this is all of my experiences that I'd like to share. Uh, one more last note is that get enough good rest and sleep the night before the exam and don't drink too much water before you walk into the exam room because it's three hours continuously. Um, I, I took the exam in my house because there's no proctor in person around me. So I have to sit in my room and complete the three hour session, including the Prior to exam, it's asking you a few questions and you have to wait for the online proctor to show up. That would take up to 15 minutes. And then after you finish the exam, they might ask you five questions to ask you how the exam went through for you. And that might take a couple minutes. So total is going to be more than three hours. Apparently you cannot go to a restaurant, otherwise your exam will be revoked. So don't drink too much water before you walk into the exam room just to save yourself. Yeah, that's it. So hopefully this video is helpful for you guys to prepare for the AWS DevOps or other AWS certification exams. If that's the case, just do me a favor and hit the like button. That's going to help a lot with the YouTube algorithm and I really appreciate it. Also, don't forget to check out my other videos that I have made, whether it's AWS certification exams or lead code or data structure and, and algorithms. Feel free to check them out and also please, subscribe to my channel. I really appreciate it. Hopefully I'll just see you guys in just a few short seconds. Thank you very much for watching.